What a few weeks it has been for Brazil's Jessica Delboni. She went five hard rounds with the champ, Alicia Zapatella. She felt that she had did enough to win that fight. She found out that wasn't the case. And she's taken this new challenge in stride and has done everything she's needed to do, particularly when it comes to tactics. She knew that the judges weren't seeing what they wanted from her in that championship fight. Same commission, you know, same criteria. She comes in tonight and she's took home two decisions. So now that we go into the much more traditional three, five minute round fight, Jessica Delboni can sort of go back to her, you know, comfortable way of fighting. But at the same time, she still needs to play favor to the judges in a roundabout way because she's standing in front of a very tough Lindsay Van Zandt. That's very true, TJ. You know, we have the same format, the same commission. Uh, she's facing an opponent she's faced before. We actually do have different judges than um, sat for the Zapatella fight. So there is a little bit of still feeling out. But so far, what she's been doing in this tournament has been working for her. However, like I've said multiple times, she said these are just sparring matches. The real fight is at the end of the night. The real fight is when I face Zapatella for the belt once again. Speaking of this commission, Kansas at the forefront of open scoring. So now that we have three five minute rounds, that will be into play for the very first time tonight in open scoring. I mean, these athletes deserve to know where they stand with the judges. They absolutely do, TJ. And I, I have to say, you know, this is a rematch from, from their fight in, at Invicta 36. And I kind of think they're facing new people tonight. I know that, you know, Megan was saying they know each other, they face each other. It's a, it's a matter of implementing what they do best. Um, but I, I, we are definitely seeing a resurgence in LVZ. We're also seeing a calm, not emotional, you know, not stressed out, not feeling any pressure, Jessica Delboni. And I think that's when Jessica Delboni can be very dangerous. Which is interesting because she felt some pressure leading into that title fight. And tonight, it seems like that pressure is off and she's done everything she's needed to do thus far to solidify the spot in the finale. And we saw that gesture of respect um, to LVZ. Del Boney and LVZ like each other, you know? I they There's no animosity between these two, which actually I think should make for a very fun fight. I think they're gonna let go out there and it's not gonna be motion charged, it's gonna be technically charged. It is the tournament finale of the Invicta FC Adam Wade Phoenix Tournament. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for what is our main event of the night here in Kansas City. It is powered by Zebra. Lindsay Van Zant, the American, is 27 years old, as is the Brazilian Jessica Delboni. LVZ will have a one-inch height advantage and a two-inch reach advantage. We are set to go three five-minute rounds in the Adam Wade division for our official introductions of this tournament finale. Here is Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live on XS TV from Memorial Hall here in Kansas City, Kansas, this is the main event of the evening. Three rounds scheduled this for the Phoenix Tournament Adam Waite Championship. Sanctioned by the Kansas State Athletic Commission, the executive director is Adam Rohrbach. The three judges scoring at cage side, Kevin Champion, Greg DeVilbis, and Al Mildred. And when the action begins inside the cage, your referee in charge, Nick Behrens. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Fight fans in attendance, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. She is a mixed martial artist standing five feet, two inches tall. Weighing in officially 105 and three quarter pounds in 11 professional fights. Her record stands at seven victories and four defeats. Fighting out of Scottsdale, Arizona, here is Lindsay. Demza Van <laughs> And across the cage, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, one inch tall. She weighed in 105 and one half pounds and in 13 fights holds a record of 10 victories and three defeats. Fighting out of Niterói, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Here is Jessica Correa de Bonnet. Obey my commands at all times. Most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now if you want. On my command, come out fighting. A pair of veterans looking to reignite the rivalry. Former title challenger Jessica Delboni taking on Lindsey Van Zant. This for the Adam Waite Phoenix Tournament Championship. 
Referee Nick Barron's getting this assignment. TJ DeSantis, Megan Anderson, Julie Kedzie inside Kansas City, Kansas's Memorial Hall for Invicta FC's Phoenix Tournament. Our clock powered by Juju Me. Fight premature aging with Juju Me's high grade Juju Bees, the ultimate unknown superfood. Use code Invicta FC for 10% off. Delboni in the white, the red and blue for Lindsey Van Zandt. Van Zandt said that she felt Delboni was the uncrowned champion and that tonight this was a de facto championship out. It's for the Phoenix Tournament championship, but uh, this is going to say a lot moving forward about this Adamweight division. It really does, and she's been very dismissive of the current Adamweight champion, Alicia Zapatella, tonight. So it will be interesting to see how this one plays out. Who, by the way, is in the front row tonight? She you know, really watching all of this. She's got the best seat in the house. And for... Zapatella, you know, I had a chance to catch up with her, and she said that she leaned towards Lindsey Van Zandt. She felt that Delboni cutting weight, uh, you know, three weeks apart, uh, it might play to her detriment if this fight goes in the latter rounds. Yeah, you know, I just, it, it's interesting the way they can kind of see something that maybe we don't see when we see the rest of the competitors there. They're, they're kind of eyeing each other very clearly and, and assessing the situation uh, very strategically. And strategies have been, you know, very uh, urgent throughout the night. Be first, be often. And that changes now here with the, uh, you know, afforded extra 10 minutes here. A combination of punches there by the Brazilian. And, you know, in those previous fights, LVZ did a lot more footwork. Um, uh, I would say a lot more aggressive footwork. Um, she's still doing a great job of staying out of range, being in and out, but you can see the respect that she has for Delboni's power, um, her takedowns, and just her capacity to capitalize on openings. I think what we're also seeing is Delboni is able to match Van Zandt's speed, which none of her competitors before were able to do. So she's having to be a little bit more patient, and Delboni has phenomenal counter striking that she really has to be pay attention to. Coming forward, punches is the Brazilian, but Van Zandt able to get her back away from the cage, back at space. It's interesting, both of them really like to pull your attention up high and hit that inside leg and try to off balance. Halfway point here of round number one. Looking at the skill set of Lindsay Van Zandt, she's really showcased her high kicks tonight. We'll see if she try to utilize that here against Delboni. Right on cue. <laughs> and I think that's a really good idea. Um, high kicks and keeping range and not getting tied up this tightly in the clinch. Not yet. Delboni able to close that distance and had one underhook for a brief moment, but Van Zandt not accepting that position willingly. Beautiful elbows by Delboni on the break, though. Definitely had to eat those shots. Fainting again for that shot is Van Zandt. What she did, though, differently this time is she used it to come up striking, which she didn't in the previous attempt. She's blending it together a little bit better, which, you know, is going to make Del Boney really have to question the integrity of that takedown, which is going to set up Van Zandt striking a lot better. But, man, some big punches by both ladies right now. We're getting echoes of the uh, Del Boney Zapatella fight in that <laughs> Del Boney just walks through punches. She just walks you down. A lot of volume here in this first round by Delboni, but we see Van Zandt come high with that kick. Didn't land, but again, that's something she's thrown in all of her matches thus far tonight. And I think it would be a really well-timed attack when Delboni's actually attacking her because Delboni does have the tendency to kind of put her hands down and just go forward like that with her chin forward. She's so fast though, guys. Back at space. You know, Van Zandt really, again, called her shot, winning her first quarterfinal via submission. You know, looking at it tactically, would she have been better off, Megan, to face Delboni in a one-round fight compared to a three-round fight? 
Honestly, yes. She should have picked the one round option. Dalboni is a different beast in itself. I think she's the only one that's been able to compete power wise, speed wise, timing wise with Van Zandt. And I think instead of three rounds, just having one round, she's able to really do a lot more because now she, she's pacing herself. Van Zandt's pacing herself a little bit because she knows she does have 15 minutes instead of just five. Well, now she's only got 10 because five are in the books here between these two women in our tournament finale. Jessica Delboni taking on Lindsay Van Zant. Your thoughts, uh, you know, on the posture and demeanor and output of Jessica Delboni here in round number one? Uh, I think she's picking up speed. I think she's picking up aggression right now. You know, we're seeing four combos as opposed to three combos when she throws right now. And, you know, we can see the open scoring is kind of reflecting what I'm saying. She's definitely opening up herself when it comes to her attacks. That's not to say she doesn't have her hands full with Van Zandt, but I think that she's putting on a, a much higher pace. And again, open scoring here exclusively in the state of Kansas. The cornerman gets the score through the fence there, and then it is up to them on whether or not they want to relay that to their athlete. Both of these ladies are veterans, so I'm assuming that they'll want uh, all the information uh, you know, afforded to them. That's not always the case. Not all, we'll have to see uh, you know, how it will play out uh, over the course of 15 minutes, whether or not they got that information and decided to make adjustments from it. But we are headed into round number two now. Jessica Delboni, again, one half of that title fight against Alicia Zapatella a few weeks ago. She's taking on Lindsay Van Zant here, the tournament finale of Invicta FC's Phoenix tournament. See, the judges had leaned there with uh, Delboni, your thoughts on the scorecard early, Megan? I agree with that decision. I think Delboni did a much better job of uh, controlling the pace. She controlled the range. She threw the more damaging strikes. She was the aggressor. She was putting Van Zandt on the back foot. And, you know, she stuffed those takedowns. Uh, obviously, even though Van Zandt looked to take it to the ground, uh, the judges scored it in favor of Delboni because she wasn't able to really solidify the position. And, and I think that is, that's the difference is if, if someone is not able to solidify a takedown, then you should not be scored in favor of the person going for the takedown. It's more about what you do with the position if you're able to get it rather than just going for it. And uh, yeah, we'll see if she's able to get it at any point in, in this round. Looking at Delboni again coming forward with some punches. We've seen some kicks from Van Zandt. Would you like to see her mix up the kicks, maybe attack the lead leg? Very much so, Delboni. Delboni. Yeah, and you know, we saw that she, again, she blended that, that takedown attempt with an attack. I would love to see her do something, some more of that, especially when she's in close, because there'll be more shin connection to the face. Um, she's flexible, we've seen her do it before. Van Zandt is showing a lot more aggression this round. She's throwing a little bit more, which I'd like to see. She's really not letting uh, Delboni kind of set the pace for the exchanges. And you know, what you said earlier about, you know, it's what you do with the position. One position that Delboni always kind of establishes is real estate on her feet, right? She's controlling the center of the cage. She walks her opponents down gets them their backs up against the wall and keeps them there for the most part. I say that and of course Van Zandt's off, but you know what I'm talking about. These atom weights move quickly. Yes, they do. Approaching two minutes down here in this second round, kicked that lead leg of Delboni by Van Zandt. Nice. I kick. Did yeah. land there. Delpony just walks through that. What I would like to see Delpony do is as Van Zandt is circling, she's just following her. She needs to cut off the cage. See, she's just kind of trotting, trotting along, following her around the cage. I would like to see her use a little bit more footwork to cut off the cage, and she's going to be able to kind of maneuver Van Zandt into those big punches instead of just following her around. Halfway point of this fight, two and a half down in round number two, clinched up against the fence here. And I have to say, Van Zant's showing it. She's not successful in getting off the cage right now, but in earlier fights and earlier in this fight, she's showing a really nice evolution of her escapes from her back up against the cage. She's able to twist up high and stomp through low. Able to get off that fence is Van Zant. Back at space. And this is what Van Zandt needs to do. She needs to pick 
her shot. She needs the in and out motion. She's got the range. She needs to use it. She cannot let Delboni get on the inside because once she does, she is unstoppable. That was really nice right there. And I totally agree with you, Megan. I think that one of the things Van Zandt really needs to utilize is fakes to that left hook. She's able to land that left hook if she believes in it. It's there for her. Coming forward again with punches is Delboni, but Van Zandt able to put her on the fence for a brief moment, but now back at space. And that's the thing here with Delboni, you know, even when Van Zandt is starting to throw more strikes, it's the Brazilian that is constantly marching forward. Yeah, and you have, you have to think how much of that is based upon that last fight with Zapatella. Mm. High kick again by Van Zandt, but... Beautiful takedown defense, though. And that just shows the well-roundedness of Delboni, but Van Zandt, so game. And I think that the difference in the kicking game, the teeps, the head kicks, the leg kicks, it's really what's going to set her apart if she can keep that range. Mm -hmm. Nice job by Van Zandt to get back at space, pawing forward with that left hand. Which thing she was doing well against Mahalik was attacking the body with those kicks too. I don't recommend kicking like a round motion, a roundhouse kick to the body of Delboni. She's so good at grabbing kicks, but side kicks and teeps straight on, pulling your leg back quickly, will establish her longer range. And I think this is where Van Zandt is having success because Delboni is just following her around so she's able to use those angle changes to her advantage. Again, just so impressed with Delboni's takedown defense. Just beautiful. Oh, some hard punches. Now 10 minutes in the books between these atom weights. Lindsay Van Zandt, Jessica Delboni. We are headed to a round number three and some confidence here growing for Delboni. Arms up in the air might be uh, attacked if you get that lactic acid up, but she's very confident. She's not taking a step back. And, you know, this is a much different Lindsay Van Zandt from their first meeting. And, you know, both of these women are really showing uh, their progression and uh, abilities here in, in this rematch. Yeah, one of the things you have to admire about Delboni is fighting in a tournament like this in some ways is more dangerous than another title fight. She could have sat it out. She was, in my mind, at least number one contender for the belt until this tournament three weeks later pops up. But she decided to push herself. And in doing so, she's facing opponents that maybe she's faced in the past. But again, she faced LVZ in the past. And I just think this is a completely new LVZ. She's locked in. She's more on point. And Delboni's got the Delboni's to do it. She, she wants to get in there. She wants to fight everyone. So we look at the open scoring there, the information being articulated to the athletes. Delvoni turned around and, and got a, a look at that score, so she knows exactly where she stands going into this third and final round. Uh, you know, very uh, competitive bout, and both of these women deserving uh, of this tournament finale position. And, um, you know, Megan, I'm curious your thoughts on, on that score. We got it even on two judges. Yeah, I... I'm not surprised at the scoring. I, I, I can see where the one judge scored it for Delboni, but I can also see why the other two scored it for Van Zandt. Her movement is what set her apart in that round. So at least Delboni going into this round, she knows she's up on one scorecard. She just needs to get up on one more. And she, this is what she's doing. This is what I love to see. Even though she's gone 20 minutes already of fight time tonight, she is putting it all on the line in this last five minutes. She's constantly pressing forward. She's not giving Van Zandt enough space to really effectively use her range. And it really is all about space and timing. I mean, you look at Van Zandt, she's moving and trying to do the right things, but when you have this Brazilian just marching you down, constantly shutting down your offense by forward aggression, it's hard to get going. Yeah, shutting down your offense, and then the offense you have against somebody marching forward is to take them down, and she's so good at deflecting that, TJ. You know, props again to Van Zandt. Her movement, like you said, Megan, and the range of her kicks, the display she's able to do up and down and up and down, but when Del Boney gets rattling off those punches, it is really hard not to shy away, not to try and, you know, move away and then try to re-engage from another angle, and Delboni just doesn't allow it. I think this round is really going to showcase who wants it more. And I think Delboni is kind of starting to edge away a little bit. I would like to see Van Zandt just, you know, she's moving a lot. I want to see her just sit down, throw punches, make Delboni respect that range. Mm -hmm. Tonight's journey started with eight athletes. We are down to two. It's our tournament finale. And as you mentioned, a lot of work put in by both 
uh, women, and you know this is where your heart is truly tested. It's this final round of this final fight with everything hanging in the balance. It really is, and just the showcase of Del Boney's athleticism. She just went a hard 25 minutes three weeks ago. She's now put in another hard 25 minutes with three different opponents. Like, it just showcased the level and the caliber of competitor that she is. It's a beautiful overhand right there landed for Van Zandt earlier, and they gave her a lot of confidence. Still not getting those takedowns, but I love that she keeps going for them because it does bring Del, Del Boni's attention to a different area. Good left hook. Van Zandt talked about her evolution as a fighter and the, the need to leave the East Coast and end up in Arizona. She's found a home out there, and you know we've seen the product of, of that move here uh, unfold inside the Invicta FC cage tonight. Yeah, I've always felt that going west is generally a good idea for a fight career. You know, just and going west metaphorically as well, TJ, just getting out of your comfort zone, going somewhere where it's going to push you and change your atmosphere, change what you know what you're experiencing. I mean, going west here in the states for Megan is going to a different hemisphere. <laughs> North. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's a very big change. Coming up on the final two minutes here for these atom weights in our tournament finale. Oh, Ooh, nice, nice right hand. That made her mad. Oh, Del Pony looks bad. Yes, yeah, she <laughs> does. I would not want that staring me down in the cage. Think about everything that Del Boni has gone through. You mentioned a lot of people wouldn't have even taken this tournament opportunity. Why do I need to earn my title fight when many people believe I'm the uncrowned champion? That was not the mindset of Jessica Del Boni. She's got 90 seconds to leave it out of the judges' hands. I just have to say how much respect I have for these two competitors tonight, you guys. They really are leaving it all out there. And that's really what this tournament is all about. The one night tournament thought to be a thing of the past, but Shannon Knapp worked with the Kansas Commission to bring it back. And so far, it's been just a treat to watch this unfold inside the cage. I think just the difference in power between when Van Zant throws and Del Boney throws is just, I think that's such a big factor, particularly in this third round. When Del Boney throws it, sounds like it hurts, whereas Benzette, she's crisp and she's clean with those punches and she's very strategic with where they place it. Very important final 45 seconds here between these atom weights. Del Boni controlling Van Zandt up against the fence, lowering her elevation, trying to get the takedown, but LVC having none of it. Nice. Again, Del Boni flawless with her takedown defense. We've seen that over the course of this tournament as well as that title fight, but Van Zandt trying to stick with it and Del Boni again saying no. She sticks to her like butter though. She doesn't let any space come between them. She just gets right back in it. Well, the journey tonight ends right there. The judges will have to sort it out, but Jessica Del Boni believes that she called her shot and marches right over to the Adam Weight champion and says, look, I want to fight you again. I don't think she said it in those words, <laughs> but she wants to fight her again, and we'll see what the judges say. She may have done something very difficult. Let's not undersell what it means to go through three different opponents to earn a title fight that many people believe that you should already own. Jessica Del Boni said, I'm up for that challenge. And right now, on the outside looking in, it looks like she did what she needed to do. I, you know, from the outside looking in, again, I, I haven't seen the scorecards, but I have to tell you, this is the kind of MMA that just gets me so excited. I want to throw the table over and, like, jump around the cage. I'm, both of them put it all out there, and both of them should be so insanely proud of themselves. Because that's the thing, too. When you look at Lindsay Van Zandt, she is a completely different fighter than we've seen in the past. We saw that. She took on high-level competition tonight and was game throughout all of it. We'll see if the judges will side with her. I mean, it was even, you know, with two judges going into that third and final round. You know, who knows what's going to happen, but I will say this about Lindsay Van Zandt moving forward. She's definitely a factor at 105. Oh, she really is, and I think whoever wins tonight put their heart all all of it every part of them in the cage and I think you know Van Zandt showcased that her well-roundedness her growth her evolution as a martial artist and Del Boni really showcased you know her 
mentality, her toughness, her fortitude for coming back three weeks after going a hard 25 minutes for the belt, coming up short and just putting on an absolutely dominant display from start to finish the entire night. That fight recap brought to you by Work From Home. Visit WFHLife.com, the only brand exclusively focused on work from home, soft, comfortable and fashionable. Save up to 60% off at WFHLife.com. All right, the judges have tallied their tens and nines. Who's the atom weight winner? Joe Martinez will tell us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges, and here are the totals. 30-27, 29-28, and 29-28, all for your winner by unanimous decision. And now the Phoenix Tournament atom weight champion from Brazil, Jessica Correa de Bonnet. A unanimous decision goes the way of Jessica Delboni. You don't usually say, and still, number one contender, but and still, number one contender. Jessica Delboni hosting that trophy high. She will speak with our Taryn Temple. Here with Jessica Delboni. Wow. I mean, three weeks ago, you get knocked down. You come right back and earn another title shot. What's going through your mind right now? I am the real champ. I am the real champ. I know this. I can't. Three years ago, I lost, but I know I won. I won that fight. And, and I proved this today. I fight with three girls in three weeks, my last fight. So I just continue training, and I'm here now. And God and our own all glory be given Jesus Christ because he is everything in my life. And today, he proved to me that Como que eu falo a honra da segunda casa maior do que a primeira, eu falo assim. A honra da segunda casa é maior do que a primeira. The honor of the second house is bigger than the first. Yeah. So today, this, this is mine. I, I'm, um, I'm very happy. Uh, I'm, thank you. Thank you, my coach, Giliard.